Hey everybody and welcome to episode 3 of the Expansion Pack. This episode is the beginning of our variety series called Behind the Sticks, where I have in-depth conversations with fighting game competitors about their favorite characters, strategies, and fighting games. Today we'll be talking to three players about recently released Samurai Showdown, Street Fighter 2, and Super Smash Bros. Melee. Now it's time to press start and dive into the expansion pack. right now yeah so uh my name is uh nathan henry i go by oreo speedwagon okay on uh in the fighting game community as far as fighting games i play i go i play uh, samurai showdown a lot because it's new and it's popular and i play the old ones quite a bit but i also play other stuff i play a lot of anime fighting games like guilty gear i like marvel a lot any pretty much anything i mean i there was a point where i just stopped playing like all other games mm-hmm. and just picked up fighting games about pretty much exclusively nice what yeah. was that uh, about two, two and a half, three years ago. Was there any specific reason you just delved into that? Uh, so, I, I was I was playing a lot of, like, uh, I mean, I played a bunch of games, and I've always played a bunch of games, but I was playing a lot of, like, Dota and League and stuff back then, Same. a few years ago. And, you know, I, I found I, I'm a really competitive person, so, but I don't really like the responsibility of depending on someone else a lot for uh, success in your, in your uh, game, like, Let's say you're playing Dota, and you're position one, so you're a carry character, and your position five's not buying boards, so you're getting jumped all the time. Yeah, you can't sacrifice your farm to do that, and then like you kind of snowball out. And if you lose in, in like Dota, it takes like an hour to lose, right? Or in League, it takes like thirty minutes, right? Minimum. In a fighting game, uh, the responsibility is entirely yours, right? Any mistake is your mistake, and that's kind of fun. And it's more stressful that way, but it's more fun that way as well. And uh, and it, the time it takes to lose or win is like two minutes. Yeah, 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 I completely agree with that. I was a league player as well, and I play. I had my hand in Dota a bit, and they're fun, but there are a huge. They are a huge time commitment. Yeah, they're big time commitments, and so are fighting games. Yeah, but, uh, it's just like that team responsibility is a big thing. Like if you're playing league and you're just only doing solo queue, it can get really, really exhausting, right? So you said that fighting games can also be a large time commitment. So I want to ask you, like, what are some of the things that you do to prepare for uh, competition? So, or um, the best fighting game players in the world. I've been playing fighting games for like 20 years. And they're the best because they practice regularly for 20 years. It's like a part-time job, right? You put 20 hours a weekend practicing, going in training mode by yourself, doing one thing over and over and over and over again until it works for you consistently. And then you go into a match and just being able to do that thing over and over and over again is not enough. You have to confirm the situation where you can do that thing you've been practicing and then do it, right? And then have the mental fortitude to do it. So it's, it's one part just like grind, endless, endless grind. It's like doing APM in StarCraft or anything like that, or tech skill in Melee. You're just constantly grinding. And then you go into the game and you have to, on the spot, in a, in a millisecond's time, do recognize, I can do this, I have to do this, I'm going to do this, right? It has to be completely reactionary. Nice. Um, that way, uh, in that time you've spent practicing all these things that you can do with your hands, you can spend more time in the match thinking about the concepts. You don't want to have to think about, okay, I landed a hit, I need to do this specific combo. You want to think about, all right, I'm going to land a hit, I'm just going to do the combo because it's like completely rote and muscle memory to me. I'm going to think about what to do in the next situation where the opponent gets to act, right? Like a popular situation is called knockdown and wake up. You knock an opponent down, you have a whole bunch of options you can do, and the opponent has a whole bunch of options they can do to counter it. So you have to develop a strategy of how am I going to mix them up, they call it mix-ups, how am I going to mix them up to get hit as they get off the ground? And what can I do to uh, you know stop them from choose whatever option they pick, blow that up, take advantage of that, and that's where like the mind game element comes in. And learning that to become good at fighting games, learning that mind game, takes a long time of just losing, just playing games and losing. I've been playing, so I have like I play Guilty Gear as my main game. 
I have 700 hours just in the PC version. I've been to a couple tournaments and I've played a couple, you know, thousand matches offline. I play it here every week when we have it set up. I've lost, of the maybe hundreds of thousands of matches I've played, I've lost maybe 900 or, or 90,000 or so, like the vast majority. Like, and it's demoralizing, but as part of that, like I said, part time job process, you play, you learn, you improve. Yeah, yeah, you have to it's be, regular. you have to be diligent. And exactly. loss is just part of it. So, yeah. You talked about Samurai Showdown in the beginning and this kind of practice that you have to get into. So I'm personally a Mortal Kombat Smash sure, player. Sure. Um, I tried getting into the Street Fighter, like just being comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. Very intense game, mm-hmm. a lot a lot higher of a learning curve. But considering that Samurai Showdown looks very different from all those games, it seems like a very cut and dry, like if you mess up, you could lose the game in yep. a couple hits. What are some of the things that you've noticed in your playthrough of the game that can make you a better player. So, I do agree that I think Samurai Showdown is a very different game, and I think it's different in a lot of ways that are pretty good if you're if you're getting into or new to fighting games. For example, I talked about like there's that element of grinding where you have to go into a training mode and practice this one thing over and over and over and over again. Samurai Showdown de-emphasizes that a little bit. The combos are very simple. Most of the combos are like two hits, right? Like say for example in Mortal Kombat. If you do like Scorpion, like one one in the spear or something, and hold him, yep. then you do like uppercut and then jump over, yep. jump punch yep. or whatever. Yep. You don't have to do a whole long, long sequence like that. In Samurai Shodan. It's literally like your combo in Samurai Shodan equivalent would just be one one spear, and combo's done, mm-hmm. right? There's no practice really involved. So what ends up happening is uh, you spend a lot more time playing and interacting with your opponent. So what you learn instead of all this time spent on combos and execution, you spend instead on yeah mind game with the opponent and thinking about what their character interactions are, like what's punishable of the other characters is like a big thing. That's a big thing in every fighting game, but you get to that element really fast. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the cool thing about Samurai Showdown is that because it's so de-emphasized on this mechanical knowledge, there's a lot of that interactivity and stuff that comes to the forefront. So you can pick up the mind game element really fast. And then uh, you said like things I noticed is like uh, to be good at Samurai Showdown, patience is the biggest one. A lot of players, so Samurai Showdown is a game where if you make one mistake, you're liable to lose half your life, potentially more, depending on the situation, mm-hmm. depending on how severe the mistake is as well. Like, for example, I play Ukiyo. Ukiyo has this move where he goes into the air and does like a big fire swipe, and it's an overhead, and so you have to block it standing. And it comes out very fast, comes out in five frames, so you can't react to it, right? And he has a bunch of lows that knock down, and the overhead also knocks down, so that's the mix up. You do either a low that knocks down or the overhead that knocks down, they have to guess. If they guess right on the overhead, you lose like 75% of your life in her. Wow. Yeah, if they block that overhead, you're basically done. Wow. So you have to you have to really be aware of your opponent's blocking habits and be very patient with that move. Because if you throw it out willy-nilly, it gets blocked and you lose the game. You're liable to lose the game. So you also mentioned you played the older one. What are some differences yeah, yeah. you noticed from the older one to the new one? Things you like, don't so like? So I've played, I played two, five special, which is the last popular one, and then this one. This one is seven. So there was like six in the middle of those. Right, Not a lot of people... That. Not a lot of people played six because it's not very good <laughs> for yeah. a lot for a lot of reasons. But six, uh, I played I played five special and two the most, and five special in particular. Five special is a very different game. It's a lot faster. Characters just walk faster is a big thing. But in Samurai Showdown Seven, which is the new one, uh, you have your four buttons are light, medium, heavy, and kick. In Samurai Showdown Five Special, you have light, medium, and then you press those two together to get heavy. And you have kick and roll. You have a mobility button on your okay. D button. So you have duck, roll, hop, and all these other things. You have all these movement options. So the game's a lot faster because you're moving around a lot more. And that's kind of fun. And But the punishment element is still there. The high damage is still there. But it, it's a little bit faster in that way. And that's kind of fun. At the same time, there are some things that come up, some interactions that I don't prefer that are in 5 Special. Like, for example, in that game. So in this game, if you do throw, and you miss the throw, you're just out there. right? The throw comes out and it's just out there. In 5 Special, if you, miss a, if you can't get a throw, you get hop. So just randomly throwing out throws isn't as risky because you just hop past the opponent or something like that. You just dodge a move or something instead of whiffing a throw and losing half your life. So I think throws being a big commitment is a major, is a thing I really like. And Samurai Shadow 2 has a lot of that element of commitment. In fact, I think I think 7 is a combination of a lot of the old ones, but mostly takes from 2 and 4. 4 has the same control scheme. Nice. But two, 2 has the same slow pace, a lot of just back and forth poking. Um, not a lot of that mobility element. There are roles in that game as well, but you don't use them as much. So there's a lot of differences. They ch- every iteration of Sam Show has changed a lot, but the things that stayed the same at the core is like the big damage and the de-emphasis on like mechanical execution and stuff. 
So where can you play Sam 5? Now I'm just curious to pick it up myself. So there's a bunch of different ways to play Samurai Shodown 5. The first way, or the couple ways if you want to support the game, is uh, you can buy it on Steam for $10. Samurai Shodown 5 Special. It has excellent netcode and all that stuff. But the community is kind of small for it. And the community is kind of small for it because on there's a service called Fightcade. And Fightcade is like an emulator for old Neo Geo and yep. Capcom games and stuff. They kind of picked that up to play a yeah, JoJo yeah. game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, JoJo's on there too, which I also play. JoJo's is on there. Samurai Showdown is on there. A bunch of other games. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is also on there, and that's pretty popular. Uh, but that's where most of the online community for Samurai Showdown is, is on Fightcade. So nice. if you want to play it there, you can pick it up. And that's completely free. Acquiring the ROM is technically not legal. Yeah. But... Well... You know, <laughs> you know, I don't condone. I don't yeah. condone. Uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> we don't. We don't condone downloading illegal games. But you know, if you happen to pick it up, exactly. Get Have good. Fun. Yeah, get exactly. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a fun game, and it, you know, it's a good way to gauge if you like Samurai Shodown. Cool, man. So, if any of our listeners want to play with you online, where can they reach you? Okay, so you can find me on uh, Discord. Discord is actually the one of the biggest places to learn about fighting games in general. There's a Discord for any fighting game out there, no matter how obscure. Uh, like I mean like games that get like five people at an event you can find discords for like at least 20 to 50 people to talk about the game and improve the game and, um, but I mean the Samurai Showdown Discord you can find me there uh, my handle is Oreo Speedwagon just a cookie and then the band uh, you can find me you can find me on Samurai Showdown Discord you can find me on Twitter at Orion Speedwagon O-R-I-O-N and then the band Galactic yeah, yeah. It's my middle name. That's where the Oreo oh, comes from. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it's elegant fighting game. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Twitter's also a very popular place to learn about fighting games. If you want to keep up with new tech and stuff like that, everyone always posts their stuff on Twitter. So nice. Twitter and Discord are like the hotbeds for fighting games if you want to learn how to play. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks, Oreo Speedwagon. Appreciate yeah, your no, time, thank you. man. Yeah, no problem. Good luck out here with Samurai 7. Thanks. Yeah. So... What's your name and what fighting games are you playing right now? Oh, so my name is Luke. I am way into, uh, always been into Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, the arcade game. That's definitely my all-time favorite there. So that's that's kind of my main one that I always compete and play. I also play a little bit of uh, Ultra Street Fighter 4. And uh, lately I've kind of been playing some of the new uh, Samurai Showdown game that just came out here. Nice. So that's been a bit of fun there. But yeah, I guess I'm kind of you know limited in the amount of fighting games that I play, but I like to kind of... You know, bring stuff out, let other people enjoy the games, and I try to also help sort of run some events uh, in town here that uh, let other people, you know, bring together their games and uh, do the playing. Yeah, so it seems like you have a heavy 2D fighter background, and one thing I wanted to ask you about the setup is I noticed when you were playing uh, Super Street Fighter back there, you have this setup that is unlike anything else here. Can you explain a little bit what that is? Right, so that is uh, what would be called a super gun. So it's, it's kind of a weird name, it's a Japanese name, but basically what it is is it's an arcade machine, but you take out all of the big parts of it. So it's, all it is is the controls, the power, and the video components. You just plug it into a TV, and you have to have an arcade board, so you have to have the actual game that goes in the arcade machine. But you can connect that to it, and you can play the actual arcade version of you know a fighting game or whatever sort of arcade game you have. So that's what I have that I'm running um, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo on over here at uh, FSU. But it's pretty handy for the folks who play games like uh, ST, is what we call it, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Um, for playing ST, we prefer to have the arcade version of it. There's, there hasn't been a totally accurate home console version of it yet, so we like to have the actual thing. So I bring that out here uh, for folks to play. So <laughs> what, are, what do you think are some of the issues with that translation? Because I've never heard of that. The community not really adopting those um, what remasters, I guess you would call them, uh, like or the home console versions. Yeah, yes. the home console versions. Yeah, they um, they they hardly had them when the game actually came out in 1994. The only home version of it, I think, was for 3DO, which was a really expensive console. Nobody had it, and I think there were some differences between the arcade version and the 3DO version. So that you know that was out, and later it came out for PlayStation One. And that just had a lot of differences in just the way moves worked, you know, the speed of the game, things like that. Um, and later they come out with it for um, PS2 and, you know, various other systems. They actually have it out for PlayStation 4 now. And as far as I know, those versions are totally accurate, but they they have a little bit of input lag to them. So, I mean, when you, when you press the button, there's a slight delay before the actual action happens on the screen. 
Uh, so when you're playing the arcade game, there's zero input delay whatsoever. You hit the button, and the instant you press the button, your action is happening on the screen. So that, that does change the way the game feels to play it. Nice, yeah, I could tell that immediate reception is critical to like sometimes the strategy yeah. of the game. And actually, I'd like to ask you, how did you get into playing that game, and how did you get into, I guess, learning how to play the game? Because mm -hmm. one thing a lot of people that may play video games but may not usually play fighting games mm -hmm. is they'll notice that Street Fighter can be a very difficult game to string combos, to yes. understand mind <laughs> games, and to actually win. Yes, Street Fighter takes a long time to get good at. When I first started playing it, uh, I think I bought it for my Super Nintendo. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have ST. I was just playing Super Street Fighter 2. Uh, but, you know, I, I started out with that one, I think, uh, when I was in high school. And I was like, oh, this is really fun. But I had no idea what I was doing. It probably took me, you know, it took months to get to the point where I could just play the game comfortably, just to be able to do all the moves and stuff. And then after that, um, you know, I just happened to happen to sort of stumble across the local fighting game community. And I was like, well, I'd like to go and uh, try and play with these guys. And, you know, and it just sort of opens your eyes. There's a big, you know, there's a long way to go in order to get good at fighting games. And it took me, you know, years before I was able to win very much at all. Yeah, like defend um, yourself. Right. But that, you know, that's part of the fun of it is it, it definitely you can feel sort of the, you know, growth every time you go back and play. You're like, okay, I'm getting a little bit better at this. But you definitely have to be able to sit down and, you know, be ready to lose and learn a lot of lessons about those games before you can, you know, start winning. And I think that does sort of turn a lot of people off to finding games before they get a chance to really get good. It's just the amount of dedication you have to put in it to get good at them. Yeah. So my advice if you're trying to get into fighting games is play with people who are about as good as you are. So find someone else, you know, who's new as well and play with them and try to sort of grow along with each other. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as you go, you can, you know, get better and better and start finding these, you know, just random people who've been playing for 10 years or whatever like I have. And then you can eventually just work your way up and then you can fight with the big dog. Too. Yeah, I feel like fighting <laughs> games are very unique in that way. When you bring up growing with somebody else, they're one of the few games where it's kind of required to play with somebody to get the full feeling. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting you say that I have that same dynamic with a best friend of mine with yeah. Mortal Kombat. And I find it crazy how different Street Fighter is to other games. What do you think are some of the biggest differences between, you know, somebody, maybe somebody's played Mortal Kombat or Smash mm -hmm. Brothers and they want to try Street Fighters. What do you think they should be mentally prepared for? Mm -hmm. But I think Street Fighter is like a great first fighting game because Street Fighter 2 is sort of the game that all other fighting games are based on. And everything else is kind of a variation on it. So when you're playing Street Fighter 2, you know, you're going to learn to block high and low, which is important in, you know, that's important in Mortal Kombat as well. Mortal Kombat has a block button, but you still have to block high and low. Um, you learn about some frame traps, spacing, which is very important, teach you a strong neutral game. If, if you can learn Street Fighter 2, I think you can kind of take that and modify those skills to play whatever fighting game you want. It just teach you a strong, strong neutral game. The most important thing with fighting games is sort of learning to control space. To learn to say like if I if I throw a fireball out here, now I'm forcing this guy to either jump over it, and now I'm going to prepare my options for if he jumps over it, or he can you know block it, and now I can use my options there, push him into the corner or something, or he gets hit by it and I get a little bit of damage. You yeah. Know? So you're sort of learning your options, how they relate to the space on the screen and stuff. It's uh, it's very interesting. So question. Who do you play in Super Street Fighter, and what kind of strats do you use when you're in a round? Right. Um, my favorite character is Chun-Li. Uh, she's real good in that game. She's got a fast walk speed. Uh, she's got a decent fireball. She's got amazing normal moves. So basically, when I'm playing Chun-Li, I'll usually try and kind of throw fireballs, keep people on the other side of the screen, and just try and push them into the corner, and then go for tick throws. Uh, tick throws is basically, in Street Fighter, when you go up, you start hitting some normal moves. You know, move closer to the person, make them commit to blocking, and then you throw them. In Street Fighter 2, that's very strong because throws only have a one-frame startup. So if you if you do a tick throw perfectly in Street Fighter 2, the only way they can get out of it is to do like a reversal Shoryuken or, you know, whatever sort of reversal move that they have. So I do a lot of that with Chun-Li. She can just walk up start pressing like medium punch or something and just push someone into the corner completely just using that button 
and then you go for tick throws. Those do a ton of damage in Street Fighter 2, so that's pretty awesome. And she's got some hold special moves, right? Um, she's got... She doesn't actually have that, but she has some, uh, some sort of shenanigans you can abuse where you make... Uh, you can basically make them have to pick one direction to block, and they don't know it could hit one of four directions. It's a very uh, very tricky <laughs> thing to block. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to ask, you were playing with your friend who was uh, playing Guile and you were playing Cammy. Uh-huh. This is a personal question that I've always wanted to ask somebody, uh-huh. and I'm sure I could figure this out with a Google search, but uh-huh. hold characters. Can you explain them to me and explain so you mean a uh, you mean like a charge character? Correct. Gotcha, I'm gotcha. not even using the right terminology. Oh, it's okay. But yes, a charge character. Mm-hmm. What what? How should you be playing these characters differently, and how do you pull off these moves in a way that can lead you to success? Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's hard to describe. You have to sort of essentially what you have to do is buffer the move. So what that means is you do some other move, then you can start charging while you're doing that move. So. For people who don't understand, a charge character, most of the characters in Street Fighter, like Ryu, in order to do your fireball, you do a quarter circle forward punch. You can just you can be anywhere you know on the screen, and then all of a sudden you do down, down, forward, forward, and punch, and you can throw a fireball whenever you feel like it. With a character like Guile, or like Chun-Li, if you want to throw your fireball, the way you do it is you hold back or down back, and you have to count basically one Mississippi, and then you hit forward and do punch, and you'll throw your fireball. So you, you have to have that one second of charge time. So what you can do to make up for that is you can do something like, let's say you jump forward. As soon as you jump, you can start pulling back and charging. And now you've got your charge, you know, if you've held down back, you've got your charge for a fireball or for, you know, a, a flash kick with Guile there. So essentially that, that's what's called buffering, basically. Nice. Um, there's other moves you can do, like with Guile, if you're pulling back and you press light kick, he'll do a little hop forward knee move. So the idea is you can move forward, keep your charge held for a fireball. So, you know, basically just with a charge character, I guess the overall strategy is just learn all of your moves, all of your sort of mobility options. And the other thing is you sort of have to predict what the other person is going to do. So you have to, you know... You know, a few seconds ahead of time, you have to start charging your flash kick if you're playing Guile or something and be ready for them to jump so you can just hit it immediately. So Awesome. awesome. Well, Luke, for any of the listeners that may want to catch you online and play some Super Street Fighter, uh, what's your tag and how can they play with you? Oh, sure. Well, the best way to play with me really is, uh, you know, come out to FSU here, the, uh, the SSC, when they're having a Thursday throwdown or um, go to Flipping Great Pinball. Uh, usually on Thursdays that we uh, we don't have a Thursday throwdown here, we go to Flipping Great Pinball and have a little you know Thursday night casuals there. Uh, they've got they've got an ST arcade machine there that I play on, <laughs> so that you know that's the way to do it. I would say um, if you're in Tallahassee, look up the uh, Tallahassee Fighting Game Community page on Facebook. And we always you know post our events on there. We've got a Discord you can join. Uh, you know you can always find someone who's you know playing whatever fighting game that you're playing there. Um, the other thing is we host some tournaments around here, too. Me and my friend uh, Drew, we have a little tournament series called Tallytown Throwdown. Uh, we just had our last tournament a few weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. We had some people come out from all over the state to play in it. So awesome. It, there, there's a lot of fighting game stuff around town. You know, if, if you're listening and you're not in Tallahassee, you know, just go on Facebook and just type in name of your city followed by fighting games. You, mean, you might be surprised uh, who you find, but... Yeah, I think the best way to play fighting games is definitely uh, local. You know, get some people to just sit down with and just play long sets with. You know, online kind of doesn't have the same, you know, it's, it's not as much fun to me. It's a lot more fun, I think, to get together with a group of friends uh, like we got here at FSU and sit down and play some fighting games. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks, dude. Appreciate your time, man. Absolutely. Y'all have a good one. All right, so tell me what's your name and what fighting games are you playing right now? Uh, hi, uh, my name's Matthew Medeiros, and the fighting games that I'm playing right now, um, I'd have to say that it's specifically Melee, Super Smash Bros. Melee, uh, is the game, is the fighting game that I'm playing right now. It's probably, it's the only one that I'm playing right now. Okay, what are some others that you've had under your belt? At the professional level, or just, like, casually, or... You can give me a little bit of both. Okay, so, um, at the, pr- like, at, at the competitive level, I would say that it's probably just only Melee, as far as, like, fighting games go. A little bit of PM, 
uh, on the side uh, in the past, but that's been the only game that I've taken like super seriously, competed at like the national level. So. Whoa! Wow, impressive. Yeah. Cool, cool. So, why melee? Of all the Smash games and all the other fighting games on there, why melee? Um, it's probably because I grew up uh, playing it casually with friends. And we would just get together like every Friday or Saturday. I never owned the game as a kid, but I would just always go over to my friend's house and play it there. Play it for like, uh, a few hours a day. So that's where it sort of started right there. And then we used to actually play uh, competitive card games. And we used to go to a card store, and at the card store they would hold melee tournaments. Um, at, you know, at the little card store. So that's where it sort of jumped from casual play to you know it's a little bit of competitive, like at the regional level, you know, the, the local city level. I would say what card games would you play i'm just curious oh uh, yeah so i actually used to be sponsored for naruto the naruto card game the naruto tcg okay and yeah so that was like i was like when i was like a freshman in high school i would say i was i played the, the naruto card game I, it's not like a thing anymore but it used to be pretty big actually yeah, yeah. so i play a lot of like magic or i used to play a lot of magic yeah. gathering and i collected a lot of pokemon never really even figured out how to play yeah. but the classic pokemon cards i have a whole binder full of them yeah so the card stores where i was sort of introduced to um the uh, tournament aspect of the game. So how did you develop from a casual melee player into uh, what you consider a professional melee player? Well, I wouldn't definitely not consider myself like a professional melee player. I, that, uh, I don't know if that's what my goal is like right now, but I'm definitely taking it as serious as I can until I don't enjoy the game anymore, which I don't think is going to happen. But I think that's like a complicated question because you can... It's, it's complicated because... You can play in tournaments for many years and not really develop or uh, create this sort of like arsenal of like tech or knowledge of the game. Sometimes players go for years playing tournaments at the local level and then just not really make it like competitive. Like they'll just be like the worst players there or whatever. But I, so I think it's really important to like have a teacher. So I used to. For many, many years, I was one of those players. I would just go to a tournament on the, at the local level and just not do well. Like, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. Like, I didn't have any real direction in the game until I met one of the other players in there, who's, like, one of my good friends now. His name is... His tag is Jay. And uh, it wasn't until I started playing with him and, like, talking with him about the game that I really had focus and direction and started to become, like, a real competitive player. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, of course. Use your seafood. Sure. Or okay. sensei, I guess. Right, okay. Depending, yeah. depending, depending sure. Chinese, Japanese, whatever yeah, you want to yeah, yeah. take it. Cool, man. I've never heard about that um, kind of mentorship within fighting games. I've also been the kind of person, I don't think I've ever been at a competitive level, but I try to learn enough to defend myself. Sure. Because I don't want to get spanked out here. No, you know? yeah, exactly. You, you, right. you want to at least get some hits in and, right. and win if you can. But it's interesting to see uh, this mentorship relationship. Where did you meet Jay? Playing melee here, he would. Just, I think he came to college. It was like like four years ago or something like that. And he he would just like come to the local tournaments. Yeah, that's that's how I met him. Cool. So through the local tournaments here in Tallahassee. So you've played a lot of tournaments. You've had a lot of experience. What do you think is like one of your standout moments in your fighting game history? <laughs> Probably winning my first tournament at, at the local level, which happened here at the SLC. And that happened like maybe it was like. A month and a half ago, two months ago. So that was like, that was like a pretty, it was a pretty nice moment for me. Like I've been going to tournaments for years, never winning a tournament ever, and then just winning one for the first time. It feels nice. All right. So tell me what's going through Matt's mind when you just finished the semifinal round. You're at the finals. Like you're fighting this guy who's been through just as many rounds as you have, and it's all on the line. So right before that match, yeah, you would say okay. So I would probably say what's going through my mind is if if I'm close. If we go back and forth training games and the skill level is very um, even, I would say that I'm just gonna try my hardest. I want to make sure that like I, I do my warm up like right before the game and make sure that I'm not like rusty in, in regards to movement and just trying to make sure that I'm like gonna play the best that I can. I think, but it's that's a different answer when you when I'm going up against somebody that I know is much better than me. I would say that from that perspective, I want to take at least like one or two things away from that set. If I know that I'm going to lose, then I just want to, like, take something away from the game. You see what I'm saying? To, like, sort of inch myself closer to their skill level in the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. I remember playing uh, at one of the local tournaments on Tuesdays at Your Bowl. Yeah. Uh, one of the first ones I'd done in quite some time for Smash Ultimate, and I got bodied. 
Yeah. By um, this guy who played Donkey Kong, really, really good, like well recognized in Florida and the oh, East yeah, Coast. Okay. You might know. I, him. I know. Him, yeah. yeah. He was really nice, yeah. by the way. Like, just a really nice player, yeah, but he was guy. good. He was nasty. Yeah, he's really good. And that was like a reality check. Like, yo, Matt, you want to get good, you're gonna have to practice. Yeah. Which I haven't been able to. I haven't put that right. time and dedication yeah. into it because it is a lot. Yeah, it takes a lot. There's a lot of hours that go into the game. So just like any like sport or esport, it's just like you have to put time into it. And you have to have like a you have to have focus and a direction and like where you want to go, and what you want to improve, what aspect of the game you want to improve. So, so that's actually my time. next question. How do fighting games play in your day to day lifestyle? Um, they're pretty frequent in my lifestyle. I probably play like once a day, for like a few hours a day. Definitely more recently, I've been playing a lot more, but. Yeah, I would say anywhere between five to seven times a week. I play a lot. Probably put like, uh, probably put like close to twenty hours a week into the game. Wow. Yeah. So it's like a bright time, really. <laughs> I guess you could say that. Yeah, I just I put a lot of hours. In it. Hey, but if you want to get good, you know, you gotta put that. Yeah, in. you do. You gotta work. It's also like it's also a really fun game. Like I never, I don't really get tired of the game. And you, you could ask anyone in that in that room over there, and they they'll say that they maybe have been playing for years or even over a decade, and they'll say that this is probably the one game that they've never gotten tired of. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I can uh, relate to that. I mean, I, I definitely transition whenever a new Smash games co- comes out. Yeah. But in in general, yeah, if you're not looking at the minor details, the game is very much the same. Yeah, a lot of different characters. Right. Most of the moves kind of stay fairly similar. Yeah. Um, which leads to my next question. So, what are some of the biggest differences between Melee, um, Ultimate, Smash Four? What are the things that you love about Melee? Uh, and how could you recommend the game to somebody who may be an avid Smash player? Okay. Um, so is there any way we can pause this? Or yeah, of course. We... Okay. Thank you. No worries, right. So Matt had to do a couple rounds in the Super Smash Brothers Melee tournament that he was a part of. He was struggling to climb out of the loser's bracket and was finally in loser's final. He'll be right back telling us about what happened in the tournament and help us conclude our interview. So, once again, uh, congratulations on that first one. Thank you. Didn't get to break out of Losers Finals, but still, I think yeah. you put up a damn good uh, effort. Who was, who was it that you're playing? I mean, who first? No, uh, uh, guy in the yellow no, shirt. That was JC. He was pretty nasty. Yeah, he's pretty good. And you were doing really good in the beginning, and then that yeah. second half of the first round, I was just like, wow, he, 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 there was no way to break through some of the... Aggression that he was giving you, man. Yeah, no, he's a very good player. Uh, yeah. I did. I, I'm pretty happy with how I did against him. So. Yeah, yeah. I think you defended yourself. Yeah, sure. Didn't get spanked. That's I for sure. So. I don't think so. No. Damn. Well, I mean, uh, we were actually about yeah, to so almost weird. end. The oh, interview. really? Okay. And I, so, is there like I, a final question you want? My to last ask question you? I wanted to ask you yeah. is for the let's just say fighting game player or Smash player who's always been intimidated by melee. What are some words that you give to them? to introduce them into the game? I'd say watch the documentary. Which watch one? The, watch the, uh, the main one, the, the one on YouTube. It's called the Smash Brothers documentary. If you, Google, if you like Google it or put it into YouTube, you'll get the whole four and a half hours of it. Wow, that, 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 so that, that documentary. That, that documentary is so, like, single-handedly caused, like, a, like a, a new wave of players, like the doc kids, they call, it, like, call them, into the scene. So if you watch the documentary and you still don't want to play then um, you probably haven't played Melee. But if you really do like want to get into the game, I'd say start there. That's probably the best, that's the best advice I can give someone. Nice, nice. Cool, man. Well, if uh, some of our listeners want to play with you, I know Melee is only local, really. Yeah. Um, There's Netplay, but I don't have Netplay yet. Like, I haven't set it up yet. So. Okay, but if some of our listeners want to play with you, uh, other games, like, what are what's your tag? Where can they reach you? Uh, yeah, so my tag is almost always uh, 119, which is the, the prefix, and then Sy, S-Y. That's like my main tag that I'm so on. So 119, S-Y? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would say so. Um, I'd say, uh, I mean, I have, a, I have a Twitter page, so if any of them wanted to like reach out to me or have, I have any questions about Melee in general, uh, the, my handle is, uh, what is it? Uh, it's SSBM. 119 size, so it's SSBM and then my tag. Then you probably find me. Nice, nice. Awesome, Matt. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah, of course. It was good sitting down and talking with you about the game. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. I'll be around. Yeah, yeah, I'll be around here a lot more often. I kind of want to see the evolution of some of these players, so it might not be the last time we have this talk. It's a great thing that you're doing. Thank you so much. Awesome. No, thanks, Matt. I can't wait to see you in other events. Thanks. Thanks. (laughs) 
I hope you appreciate the conversations we had with Nathan, Luke, and Matt. This is the first time I went out and spoke to members of the fighting game community, and I have to say I really enjoyed hearing how passionate and knowledgeable these players were about the games they play. Sometimes we see fighting games as intimidating genres that make it hard for a lot of players to feel comfortable in the space. Uh, these conversations showed that the fighting game community is, for the most part, a helping one, and that even the best players suffer many losses, so it's important to lose, learn, and grow when you play. That's why I'm working on this episode series, to have cool conversations with high school players, learn about fighting game strategies, and share that information so more people feel comfortable playing these games. This is the first Behind the Sticks, but stay tuned for the next one which will be in Dreamhack Atlanta in November. The episode will likely come out after November, so sorry about that, but it will be a leveled up version of today's episode. If you liked listening to the episode, please feel free to check out our website at expansionpack.com, that's expansion without the E, and follow us on Twitter. We're continuing to grow the podcast with every episode and we'd love to hear your feedback on the show, so make sure to at us on Twitter. And uh, that's about it, so... Thanks for watching the episode and we'll catch you next week on The Expansion Pack.